we had an amazing first service, um, and God showed up in a powerful, powerful way. Uh, there was also this glory in the worship and the praise, and, uh, and the word of the Lord came forth. I will say this, that I preached a different message in the first service than I am going to preach here in this, mess, in this uh, service. So I encourage you to go online and to listen. It's bilingual, Spanish and English, um, but usually in the first service I preach in, in Spanish. My translator preaches, obviously, or translates in English. Amen? The reason why I preach in Spanish in the first service is because it's, a, it's primarily a Spanish service, but we also translate as well. But in this service, um, the Lord just gave me a different message. Is that all right? Yes. Come on, somebody. Say amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And so I'm going to pray, and I'm going to dive in to a message entitled, Restored and made whole again. Restored and made whole again. Father, I ask you to think through my mind and to speak through my vocal cords. I ask you to send the kind of anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. I ask you, Father, that as I speak to the multitude and to those online, dear God, that you would speak to the individuals. In the precious, holy, matchless name of Jesus Christ, I pray. And I pray, God, that this seed will fall into good ground, that it would germinate, and that, God, it would yield a mighty harvest back into our lives. Somebody say amen, amen. and amen. I'm going to read just a few scriptures and then we're going to dive into this message, again entitled, Restored and Made Whole Again. I want to read from the book of Luke, chapter 17, and beginning in verse 11. Luke, chapter 17, and verse 11. It says, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourself to the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, everybody say, as they went, as they, went. they were cleansed. And then it says, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Wow. And fell down at his feet, at Jesus' feet. It says he fell down on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. And then it makes note here in the scriptures, and he was a Samaritan, a foreigner. Listen to this carefully. And Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to him to give him glory, save this stranger. Notice how he refers to him as a, as a stranger only because in Israel he was a foreigner. And then it says, and he said to him, arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Everybody say, he was made whole. Now, this is never a commandment that Jesus ever gives anywhere else in the scriptures. He healed a lot of people, as you know, in the Bible. But he never told them to go to the priests. He never told them to go and to show themselves to the priest. But he told this man to do that. 
he told the nine lepers to do the same. Now, listen to this. They were cleansed. The Bible teaches that only one of them returned after he noticed that he was healed. And he returned with a loud voice. In the Greek, the word loud is the word mega. So he came back with a mega voice. He came back with a mega or a loud voice. And he glorified God and he fell down at his feet. And the Bible makes note of the fact that he was a Samaritan. And then it says, why is it that only one comes back? To say thank you, Jesus. To glorify Jesus. And Jesus answered or asked the question, if you will, and said, were there not ten that were cleansed or nine others, including you, that were cleansed? What happened to the other nine? Why didn't they return to give God glory except this one foreigner, this Samaritan? And then he says to them, he says, go, or he says to the Samaritan, go, arise, go thy way. And then he says, your faith has made you whole. I want you to listen to this. He said, your faith has made you what? Everybody say that again. Whole. It's interesting because the word whole here in the original script is the word so-so. And it literally means in the Greek to be made whole, to be made complete, to be restored, and to be undivided. To be restored and to be undivided. I want to talk to you today about how to be made whole. Everybody say be made, be made whole. Now it's very important that we understand the meaning of leprosy in the Bible. See if you can give me just a little bit more sound in the microphone. I left my voice in the first service. The Bible says that he said be made whole. And so it's very important for us to understand again the meaning of leprosy in scripture. These were ten lepers. Everybody say 10 lepers. In the Old Testament, God likens leprosy more than any other disease or sickness. He likens leprosy to sin. Everybody say sin. Sin in our lives. Now, I researched leprosy a little, and I found out some very interesting things that I want to share with you right now. There are some parallels that you may see in what sin does to a person and what leprosy did to people. And I want you to apply your understanding because this is very, very important. And I pray for a spirit of wisdom and revelation knowledge to descend upon you as the word of the Lord goes forth. Ten lepers, all suffering the same disease all facing the same tragic death, all of them, because that was their ultimate destination. They were going to die because of leprosy. You see, there was no known cure for leprosy. Whoever contracted leprosy was going to die. It was a death sentence. And the Bible teaches that all of them were watching a part of their body literally begin to die. And literally, they found themselves, as it were, burying part of who they were, almost on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. Why? Because it is one of the worst diseases that was known to mankind. And it came in stages. And the final stage with leprosy caused the outer extremities of a person's body to begin to decay and to begin to fall off. And I want you to bear in mind as I'm speaking that leprosy was compared to sin in a person's life. So you're literally burying a piece of who you used to be on a daily basis. It'd be... It begins in the face. 
then entire parts of the body, the ears, the nose, these usually would go first. It's a horrible, horrible disease. When you were a leper, you were an outcast from the temple. You were an outcast from your family. You couldn't be around even intermingling with the public. You had no hope for tomorrow. No dreams. Nothing to look forward to. But scavenging like wild dogs through garbage piles. They can't provide for themselves. They were eaten up with this disease. They lived a horrible, horrible life. No invitations would ever come to a party, to an anniversary, no birthday celebrations, no children around them, no human beings embracing them. They were literally living a sequestered life where they had no contact with the world. No human contact. They were literally in a zombie-like state. They were like zombies. People that inhabited secluded places. The disease takes so much that it starts just as a little speck. And I want you to hear this, please. And I pray that the Spirit of the Lord will give you illumination and revelation. But leprosy began... In a very unnoticeable way. It started very minute. It started like a little speck. In the eyelids. I want you to notice that the Bible says that the eyes are the windows of the soul. The eyes. So God tells us to protect our eyes. And that's where leprosy would literally begin. In the eyelids. You could be around people. And be, be a leper already. In other words, infected. You have a death sentence on you. Leprosy has come on you. But yet the people around you may not detect it as of yet. In fact, you may not detect it as of yet. In fact, it's interesting that one of the effects of this disease is that it begins to kill the nerve endings. Hear this. So you can't feel anymore. Leprosy is compared to sin in our lives because it used to be that you felt something. I'm speaking to somebody. When you first start doing things, you know, you felt bad about it before. But when sin is really getting a hold of somebody's life, they begin to lose feelings. They lose their natural affections. They lose emotions. They begin to lose everything. You begin to bury a part of who you used to be. And the victims, listen to me carefully, the victims feel no pain. When sin has a grip on you, it desensitizes you. The same way that leprosy desensitized or took all feeling from those that were infected. Why do you think God compares sin to leprosy? Because when we study leprosy and how it affects the people who contracted it, then we start understanding what's happening in our own soul, what's happening in our own lives. Some of you used to feel bad about certain things but then sin creeps in and usually it comes in by way of the eyes interestingly the things that were first affected were the eyes I'm talking about those who were lepers the eyes and then the ears and then the nose it's interesting those things that are in the head area the things that we listen to the ears our senses is there an amen in the house? And so leprosy begins to affect a person. They begin to lose feeling.
but they don't even realize it. If someone with leprosy gets a splinter, for example, something that small will begin to infect and cause leprosy to begin to spread more rapidly and they begin to die faster. Please don't let anything distract you. Get off of your phones if you're on your phones because the devil will use these things like this to rob from you. Is there an amen? So 10 men in this condition come approaching Jesus. Now you have to understand, some of these men were walking around with no ears. They just had a hole where the ears used to be. Some of these men would come and they would find themselves literally with the tip of their nose completely gone. You would literally see the nostrils that were directly going in to the skull. The nose had fallen off. You would literally see fingers, the extremities falling off. In fact, many that were lepers back then only had stubs as hands. No fingers. Just the palm and the stub where the fingers used to be. That's how debilitating, that's how horrible, that's the zombie-like state that a leper found himself in. And so these men were instructed, hear this, by the local government, the Romans, and by the religious institution, the Pharisees, and the temple, to not get around any human being, but to cry from afar and warn people by saying, leper, leper. In other words, you were expected to proclaim your illness, to proclaim what you, what you were going through. Does anybody know what I'm talking about here? And so they would find themselves crying out. They were, it was wrong of them to approach anybody. But here you have 10 men now approaching Jesus. Somewhere they had heard about Jesus. We're not told what they had heard, but there's no doubt they had heard about Jesus. They probably heard that he touched the untouchable. They probably heard that he had healed those that were incurable, that had diseases that were incurable. The Bible said that there was a leper that came to him, and he came off of a mountain and the Bible says that he falling down at Jesus' feet. Now this is another leper and this is probably a story that these ten lepers had heard about. They probably heard about the leper that came off the mountain in seclusion, living like a, like a zombie, coming to Jesus and throwing himself at Jesus' feet. And the Bible teaches that this one leper began to worship at Jesus' feet. And they probably heard that Jesus literally reached out his hand and he touched the leper and he healed him. Maybe they said to one another, if he touches the untouchable, maybe they said to themselves, he's the great physician. If he touched the leper, if he touched another leper, he'll touch me. Maybe he can touch me. Maybe there's hope for me. Some of you are in situations where you're wondering, is there hope for me? Is there hope for my marriage? Is there hope for my children? Is there hope for me as an individual, as a single man, as a single woman? Is there hope for me? Maybe you've been infected. You've been infected by this horrible, horrible disease called sin. And I might add that there is no maybe. We've all been, in one way or another, infected. Is there an amen in the house? Maybe they said he's the great physician. Now in their condition, they approach Jesus and cry out, Son of David, have mercy on us. Son of David, have mercy upon us. And the Bible says that Jesus heard their cry. I want you to understand something about this story. The first big point I want to make, and that is, there's something about leper worship. There's one kind of worship that Jesus cannot resist, and that is leper worship. 
The Bible said that the man came to Jesus who had leprosy and fell at his feet and worshipped Jesus. The question that I had is this. What does leper worship look like? Why does a leper worship God anyhow? Does he say, thank you that I've lost everything? What does a leper do when he worships? Listen to this carefully. Leper worship is when you worship God not for what he has done for you, but for who he is. When you begin to worship God for who he is, see, some of you, when God checks off all of the boxes of your dreams, you know what I'm saying, the list that you have, you become excited and you become an enthusiastic worshiper. You know, if God just gives me this job, if God just heals my marriage, if God just saves my kids, if, if, if God will just bless me with this amount of money, if God will bless me with that promotion, then I'll be an enthusiastic worshiper and I'll walk into God's house and I'll begin to praise God like I've lost my mind. But let me tell you that every now and then you have to give God leper worship. Leper worship says, this has nothing to do with my dreams. This has nothing to do with my vision. This has nothing to do with my desire. If you don't ever answer one of my prayers, I will yet praise you, oh God, for Calvary, for what you did for me. Is there an amen in the house? I'll worship you for who you are. I'll worship you Simply because you are Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. Come on, somebody. Because you are, you are the fairest of ten thousands, the bright and the morning star. Is there an amen in the house of God? I'll worship you because your goodness endures forever. Your mercy is everlasting. Your love goes from everlasting to everlasting. Somebody say hallelujah. I need somebody to understand something about leper worship. Everything is not perfect in my life, but I worship you. That's leper worship. I haven't got my breakthrough yet, but I worship you. I said that's leper worship. I haven't seen the answer, but glory to God, I will worship you even when I don't see what I'm asking for. Somebody let out some leper worship right now. In fact, we're going to take a moment and I want everybody to interrupt the regularly scheduled program right now. Get up on your feet and begin to give God some leper worship. Come on, come on, come on. You may not have seen the breakthrough yet, but come on, praise Him anyhow. You may not be healed yet, but praise Him anyhow. You may not have your breakthrough yet, but praise Him anyhow. Your marriage may still be on the rocks, but praise Him anyhow. Woo, glory to God. I didn't get the deal, but I'm going to praise you. I didn't get the contract, but yet I'm going to praise you. God cannot resist leper worship. Haven't got my healing yet? I will praise you. God cannot resist that kind of worship. Have a seat. They said, they said, have mercy. And Jesus said to them, go to the temple and show yourself to the priest. Listen to me very carefully. There are some issues in your life that the only place that you will find your healing is in the house of God. He said, go and show yourself to the priest. You need to get under anointed teaching. There's something that you can do when the devil is causing parts of your life to die. 
When leprosy is causing your marriage to die, when leprosy is causing your spiritual life to dry up, somebody's going to get it in just a second. When leprosy is causing your money to dry up, when leprosy is causing your joy to leave you, you've got to give God leper praise. But, but where do you go? There's something about getting to God's house. Is there an amen? There's something about coming to the house of God. All of your dreams, one piece at a time, may be dying. Maybe you're having a daily funeral for things that are dying in your life. You wake up in the morning and instead of having joy and greeting the new day with joy, you're greeting the new day with grieving. Because the moment you open your eyes in the morning, you realize what you've lost. You get hit with what you've lost. In fact, some of you can't even sleep at night. Because you're sitting around thinking about the things that have died recently. Or the things that are dying. And how can I recover from this? Again, all of your dreams. All of your dreams. All of your desires in God. There's only one place you can go and be made whole. I believe strongly that church, coming to church is not an option. And I'm not saying this because I'm trying to manipulate anybody. I'm saying this because I lived 43 years in the house of God. I've been serving God for 43 years. And in my worst condition, I've made it to the house of God. When I was down and out, broken, bleeding, lacerated, when I was in the marketplace or out in the world, working in a secular job, dealing, having to deal with the office politics and dealing with the hypocrisy and dealing with so many other things that come at you in life. Come on, problems in the family, brother going crazy. Come on, somebody. Is there an amen in the house? I would always make it to the house. I wasn't always perfect, but I made it to God's house. I thank God that God put that in my heart, even at a young, early, new, newbie kind of stage I was in as a Christian. Get to the house. Get to the house. Because if the devil is able to keep you from the house, oftentimes he's able to keep you from the preaching, the teaching, the anointing that you need to destroy the yokes that you are dealing with that the devil has placed on your neck. Anybody say amen to this? And as they went, the Bible says they were healed. As you keep coming to a great church, come on, like this, amen. It may not happen at first, but as they went, the Bible says, as you keep coming, sometimes you come in and you're jacked up. Come on, somebody. Sometimes you come in here and you're angry. Sometimes you come in here and you've had your heart broken in two pieces. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And you feel like God has abandoned you. Sometimes you come in and you feel like you've had the worst week that you've ever had in your life. But the moment you come in and the worship begins to go forth and the worshipers worship and the people begin to praise. Come on, somebody. All of a sudden, God begins to restore something that was dead. You begin to feel again in your extremities. Come on, somebody. What was dead, what was dying, all of a sudden, you start feeling again. You start crying again. You start rejoicing again. You start praying. My God, my God, is there an amen in the house? The Bible says that Jesus told these ten lepers, go, go to the temple, show yourself to the priest. And as they went, say as they went, as they went. the Bible says they noticed they were healed. There's a big difference between being healed and being whole. Big difference between being healed 
and being whole. The Bible says the ten were healed as they went. And they went to their homes. Yes, completely healed. But not whole. What does that mean? Well, you see, only one out of the ten did not go home. Only one out of the ten went back to Jesus and he fell at his feet and he began to worship him. Thanking him and something happened. Something happened to him that did not happen to the other nine. You see, the other nine were healed. But the Bible teaches that this man, the Bible says he was made whole. Only one of them returned, began to worship. The one who was thankful, Jesus restored him completely. I want you to understand the word for whole in the King James, the verse, if you can put that verse up. The Bible teaches that it says that Jesus was made what? Or rather that the leper was made what? Whole. whole. Look what the word whole means. Fa your faith has made thee what? Whole. Say it again. Whole. One more time, louder. Whole. whole. The word whole there, keep that verse there. The word whole there means complete. Watch this. In the original translation, it means not lacking any parts. It means all together. Watch this. It means unbroken and undivided. And get this. It also means undamaged. In other words, nine of them were healed of the disease, but were not made whole. Were not, were not did not get to the point where they were not lacking any parts. So this is what happened. You have the disease that left their body, all of their body, but the parts that had fallen off did not grow back on the nine. They went home, and if they had a stub, they still had a stub. They were healed of the disease, but their body parts had not grown back. If their nose had fallen off, they went home healed of the disease, but they didn't have a nose. Healed of the disease, but they didn't have ears. Healed of the disease, but they didn't have fingers. Are you listening to me? Even today, medical science has medicine that can stop leprosy. Did you know that? That can stop leprosy from spreading. But if you've had leprosy and it's taken your fingers or it's taken your nose and all kind of things in your body, if it's taken from you, the medicine, today's medicine, can't give it back to you. It can't cause you to grow a nose and grow fingers and grow an ear. Is there an amen? amen? These men went home, but make no mistake about it, they still looked like what they had been through. If their fingers were missing, at least it wasn't spreading. If they had lost The tips of their elbows that would also go, that's how they showed up. So they were healed by Jesus, but they still had on them the marks of where they came from, of their leprosy. Some of you have been saved, but you still look like what you were. I go on your Facebook page 
And if you used to be a hoochie, now you're saved. But you still look like a hoochie. God delivered you from the thug life. But when I go through your Facebook page, you still want to look thuggish. Yet Jesus wants to make you whole. You know, whenever I get a DM or whenever I get a friend request on Facebook, just so you know, I never just say accept. Before I say accept, I go looking at who you are. And yesterday, I'm studying, getting my notes onto my Word document, ended up not being able to print, so I have them on my phone anyhow. But I remember when I was there, there was a little notification. Somebody was requesting to be a friend. And when I looked, I saw a girl, a woman, a young woman, and she was requesting to be our friend. Our friend, not pastor's friend. In those famous words, homie, don't play that. <laughs> and so, so here I am. I'm like, well, let me see who this is before I say accept. And the first thing I see is what they write on their profile. You know, a little caption about them. Woman of God. I said, well, that sounds good. Um, worshiper, I said, that sounds even better. And I read a few little things there. And then I said, well, let me look at the pictures. And when I looked at the pictures, I almost had to look over my shoulder to make sure my kids were not looking at me, thinking I'm looking at something I ought not be looking at. Because immediately I was hit by all these uh, lewd kind of dressing and, and so on and so forth, I quickly came out of there and I press delete. Watch this. And I'm not saying this for applause. I'm just saying this because we have to be very careful. Is there an amen in the house? We need, we need to look like, come on somebody, Jesus has done something on the inside of us. Like Jesus has healed us, not only of leprosy, but he has made us. If you're still taking pictures, and please excuse me, like this. You still look like what you were saved from. Listen, God just does not want to heal you of the disease. He wants to make you whole. Is there an amen? Some of you have got to make sure you are careful who your friends are. Who you're hanging with. Because inevitably, whoever you hang with, you will always contract leprosy from. Hold on. Remember I said that leprosy was contagious? That you could not draw near to someone? Because if you did, you were able to contract leprosy from them just by touching them. 
And some of you are handling friendships that you should be far from. Not whoa, 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 Hold on a second. Don't criticize me and say, Pastor, well, how are they going to get saved if I walk away from them? Listen, the problem is not you ministering to them. The problem is you just simply hanging out with them and not really intending on being a light and not really intending on bringing them to Jesus. You just enjoy the friendships, the jokes, everything else that they do. Anybody say amen to that? And you have to be careful because you could be handling a leper. Is that all right or am I... Am I stepping on some religious toes here? Anybody say amen to that? These men went back home, and they looked like what they used to look like. Their fingers were still missing. Their ear was still missing. The disease had stopped, though. Whatever condition they were in, the leprosy was healed. But they still had the effects of what the disease had done to them. Be careful you don't still have the effects of what leprosy had done to you. But when Jesus got through with the one, the one that came back and worshipped, he said to him, what did he say? He said, be made whole. And in that moment, my God, you can see him. He's worshiping Jesus. All of a sudden, his nose starts growing back. All of a sudden, his fingers start growing back. All of a sudden, hit the toes, his, his toes start growing back. All of a sudden, his life is restored and made whole. Whole. I could imagine him leaving Jesus with that word, be thee made whole, and him going rejoicing. And then all of a sudden, he sees his old boys. Come on, somebody. The old leper gang. Anybody know what I'm talking about? All of a sudden, they're coming this way, and they look at him, and they're like, wait a minute. It looks like him, but it can't be him. I know that his nose was missing. His fingers are missing, and his life was different. I don't know what's going on, but he looks different. And then he's looking at his old boys. They still have stubs and no fingers and no nose and no ears and he's just looking at them they probably stop and they say wait a minute what happened to you I was with you when we got healed and then he goes and says well you were with me when you got healed but you weren't with me when I returned to worship when I returned to give him thanks and when I returned to give him thanks he said one word he said whole 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 and then I felt something happening in my face and my fingers and my toes and my ears and all of a sudden I became whole again my innocence was returned come on somebody my purity was returned come on my purity was returned my sang sanity was returned is there an amen in the house This is what worship can do for you. That is what learning to be a worshiper can do in your life. I'm going to tell you something. The man you see right now standing on this stage, I am a byproduct of worship. Not worship only in the congregation. If anything, that's a byproduct of what I do in private. I've learned to be a worshiper in the midst of whatever news I get, in the midst of whatever attack I'm under, in the midst of whatever rejection I've experienced, in the midst of whoever backs out and backs off and walks away from me, in the midst of who likes me and who doesn't like me, in the midst of all of that, I've learned to worship Him. I've learned to worship Him not because of what He does for me, 
but because of who he is. Is there an amen in the house? That's what worship is. I think a lot of people come to our church and they look at us and they think, well, those singers up there, they don't know anything about addiction. Though those, those preachers in that church, they don't know anything about not having a father in their life. Those worshipers know nothing about not having a father in their life. Look at these people. They're sharp. They look nicely dressed. They, they look nice. They're intelligent. They, they don't know anything about divorce. They don't know anything about child abuse. They don't know anything about being abused when you were a kid. They know nothing about a broken home and a broken family. Look at them. They don't know. It's not that we don't know. It's just that we started worshiping. And we don't look like what we, we've been through. It's not that we can't relate. The truth is that the reason we sing the songs and preach the gospel is because we know only Jesus can fix things in your life that are broken. We have a, a young lady named Coral on our stage and she worships and she leads you in praise and, and she's exuberant. She has so much joy and she almost is giddy up here on the stage. But yet she doesn't have her father in her house because he was extradited. He was removed from the U.S. He's trying to come legally but is always rejected and held back. And she's getting ready to be married to my son. And you know what it is to be married but not have your father to walk you down the aisle. You see, we look like we've been through nothing. But it's only because worship has made us whole. You see Pastor Jennifer up here. And you say she's never been through anything. Look how pretty she is. And look at how she has her own boutique. And, and look at how she preaches. And, and look at all the wonderful things she does. She doesn't know what I've been through. But what you don't know is that she was abused as a child. As a little girl. Sexually abused. And she had to suffer her adolescent and childhood life with the constant memory of her abuse. She had to forgive the young man that raped her when she was just a young girl. But you look at us. And we look like we have it all together. The only reason for my song is Jesus. I worship him because he heals and he restores again.
just because we look like we've never been through something doesn't mean that we have never been through our own leprosy. God has restored our lives. God has restored our worship team. Every person on our worship team has a story. Every one of them. Every young lady on this altar has fought through leprosy. Their own leprosy. But they found worship. And they were healed. And not only healed, but made whole. Somebody say hallelujah. Jesus can take people who have been through bankruptcy and addiction and bondage and sorrow and divorce and brokenness and betrayal and a broken heart and lonely nights and he can take them and so heal them that whoever looks at them will say, I'm sure when that, when that person gave their life to Jesus, they had not gone through anything. But I'll tell you what, everyone has. I'm sure that that one leper went home to his mom and dad and said, they said, is it, is it you? Wait, 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 is, is that you? Come on, anybody say amen to that. People, when God gets through with you, people are going to say about you. I, 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 is that really Amanda? Speaking of Amanda... I, I, I don't even have permission. Are you sure? The husband said, go ahead. You see Amanda up here and she's testifying or she's giving announcements and she looks like she just, she looks like she's never been through anything. But she came from a life that she was in these clubs for men only. Come on, anybody know what I'm talking about? That's her testimony. That's her story. She was abused as a child as well. Do you see? And when you look at her now, in fact, when I found out, because I heard her sharing sometime, I think it was in a woman's gathering of some sort, a retreat or something, and she shared some of her story, and I'm like, wow, I would have never thought, and that's a good thing, because it shows that Jesus has made her come on can you just take a praise break right now real quick real quick just just give God a praise break can you just do that right now I want to just end with this story I want to end with this story The Bible says that there was a, a family who had been through some stuff and the son decided to leave home. We know him in scripture as the prodigal son. In Luke chapter 15, 
The Bible says that when he found himself at the lowest part of his life, the Bible says that he finally got tired of where he had been. And he jumped over the pig pen that he was in, eating the same thing that the swine, the pigs were eating. And he said, I've had enough. This has got to stop. I'm going home. And he had the filth of the pig pen still all over him, the smell of the pig pen. And it's one of the most amazing stories. The Bible says that the father saw him from afar and ran out to meet him. Why did the father run out to meet his son instead of waiting for his son to come to him? Why did he do that? The reason why he did that, many scholars believe that it is because he said to himself, I don't want the whole village to see what my boy has been through. So let me go out and meet him and throw the robe of righteousness over him and cover him and put on him the ring. You see, when I put the ring on him, what I'm saying is I'm restoring his gifts back to him. I'm restoring his gift. Sometimes you can mess up. And the enemy will say, God will never use you again. But the father says, I'm restoring your gift. And I'm restoring your calling. And I'm restoring everything I've given you. Come on, your inheritance. Is there an amen? Because the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. Is there an amen in the house? When everyone has written you off, he comes and meets you, puts a robe over you, covers you, so that you won't look like what you used to look like. So he goes out, meets his son, robes him, gives him a ring, come on, gives him the American Express Platinum, puts it in his hand. Is there an amen in the house? And when he came back home, he didn't look like a prodigal. When he came in through the doors of the house, he looked like he was out on a business trip. Is there an amen in the house? I could imagine somebody said, hey, where have you been? And he probably said, ah, on a business trip. My business. And none of your business. And... And that's your story. Is there an amen? You don't have to look like what you used to look like. Is there an amen in the house? My wife, now she helps women dress modestly. Modestly. Is there an amen in the house? And by, by, by the way, we're still helping the ones on stage to dress modestly. Some of them are not there yet. But we're not going to condemn them. We're going to encourage them. Is there an amen in the house? Well, why does the pastor allow that one to come it's a little snug, it's a little bit too snug, and, 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 and believe me, when that happens, we have a conversation after. But how many of you know if we pull somebody off of the stage, it can crush their spirit? But God is holy, but he's also merciful. And he's also the God of the second chance. Is there an amen in the house? But I want you to know that God wants to 
make you whole today. Everybody stand to your feet. And I know, by the way, I've gone well over my time. But the anointing of God is here. Is there an amen? Real quickly, real quickly. Real quickly. I want to pray. I want to pray. And I want to pray for those that are here right now that say, Pastor, I'm that leper. I've been healed, but I need to be made whole. Yeah, I'm saved, but I need to be made whole. I'm saved, but I still need to be made whole. Don't be afraid. You're at, you're at home. You're, you're in the family. You're amongst family. Somebody say amen to that. If you can't get help here, where can you get help? Somebody say amen to that. You need help. That's okay. I was where you are. I've, I can't tell you the times I've needed help. Is there an amen in the house? Even as a pastor, I've needed help. I needed, I've needed somebody to raise my hands and pray for me because I didn't have the strength to raise my own hands. Somebody say amen to that. When I count to three, those of you that say, I need someone to pray for me. I need my prayer warriors right, right now. Come on, Aixia. Come on. Is there anybody else? Uh, I need some prayer warriors, some Holy Ghost, Shatarabakata prayer warriors. Is there an amen? Anna, come on. Help, help. Come on. I need, I need, some, I need some people to, to pray, lay hands. Amen. Cast some demons out if you have to. Somebody say amen to that in the name of Jesus. But what I want you to do is I want you to pray wholeness. I want you to pray that they be made whole. Not just healed, but be made what? Whole. whole. Say it again. Whole. Say it again. Whole. whole. Right now, hold on, before we pray general. In the name of Jesus, Yeshua, right now, I command every spirit of rejection, every demon spirit that is hiding anywhere in this congregation, I command you up and out in the name of Jesus right now. Right now, I expose your lies. I expose your bondage. I expose, in the name of Jesus, your manipulation. Right now, I don't care where you're hiding, whose emotions you've embedded yourself in, what soul you've embedded yourself in, in the name of Jesus, I cast you out right now. Right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Shetama Sanda Barasha Rabasi. Iakata Rabas or Romon de Devosha. Right now, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I come in. I come in. I come in. I come in to the, to the, to the house. And I bind the strong man right now. Right now. Ye Ramasa. Shirabose. Now, come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Out. Out in the name of Jesus. Nesha Rebese. That's right. You know. You know. You know. I'm speaking to you, spirit. Unclean spirit. Out right now. Right now. Come out. Come out. Come out. In the name of Jesus. Shena Mason de Rebekaya. Come out. Come out. Right now. Right now. Let her go. Let her free. And anyone else. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Anywhere else. In the bleachers. Right now. Anywhere else. Shira Maso Robo. By the way. Those of you that are in this place, pray. Just stay prayerful right now. Come on. We're, 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 we're coming in. We're binding the strong man. 
before you can go and take his goods what belongs to you you have to bind a strong man and we bind a strong man right now there's no need to be afraid no need greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world is there an amen in the house right now in Jesus name right now in Jesus name I come against every manipulating lie every spirit of manipulation right now every 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 spirit of rejection you know that rejection rejection will will cause you to mess up every relationship in your life because you filter everything through rejection now 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 this is this is Holy Ghost moment right now we've done jumped we've praised we've danced we've shouted glory to God we've rejoiced now we get down to business and we cast out everything that is trying to manipulate bind you in the name of Jesus come on now I need somebody to pray come on just just stay there praying for her in Jesus name now when I count to three those of you that say man I need somebody to stand with me pray with me pray for me come on right now one two three get out of your seat if that's you only if that's you only if you came you mean business you're tired of the leprosy you're tired come on of looking like what Jesus saved you from come on come on come this way come this way quick Right now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, ministers begin to lay hands. Masu remende, begin to lay hands in the name of Jesus. Right now, right now, right now, we're dealing with spirits. We're dealing with spirits and they want you bound, they want you, they want you controlled, they want you depressed. Now! Come out. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus right now. Come on, this is surgery. This is Holy Ghost surgery right now. Come on, where are my where are my prayer warriors at? Come on, come on. Come on, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Just just command that thing out in the mighty name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus right now. Whole, made whole made whole made whole right now everything that has died everything that has that has that has been buried right now in the name of Jesus I call I call right now back back everything in the mighty name of Jesus I call everything right now back back I call everything back back into your life back into your life everything that's been buried everything you've given up on everything you have had a funeral for in the name of Jesus there it is there it is there it is there it is my goodness my goodness Come on, Jimmy. Jimmy. We pray for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Everything you've buried, everything that has died, everything, everything that has been affected by leprosy, in the name of Jesus, right now, I speak wholeness. Be made whole. Be made whole in Jesus' name. 
in Jesus' name. Be made whole. Everything returns back to you. Everything returns back to you again. Everything, everything you've buried right now we call resurrection power in the name of Jesus. Woo! Hey, fire of God. Fire of God. Right now I call out. I call up and out everything in the soul realm everything in the realm of your emotions everything in your mind every mind game every mind game I command it to cease right now in Jesus name come on everybody here I want you to say I renounce every spirit every manipulation I've given every control I've given up in Jesus name I break every spiritual contract every covenant with the evil one right now in Jesus name I break it now now in Jesus name Father, thank you, thank you, thank you. Every contract has been broken. Every manipulation, every covenant in Jesus' name. Oh, my God. There's a fire right now. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Shikaramase. Breshere My goodness. My goodness. Stay right here, man of God. Ete rebeshendo romose kelerere Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, whole. Be made whole. Be made whole in the name of Jesus. Whole, 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 whole. Right now. Right now, right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We bind every foul spirit in the name of Jesus. Right now, we take our authority. I speak under the authority of Jesus. Hey, under the, the authority of the name. Right now, in Jesus' name. Raise up your hands, man of God. Come on. And just repeat the name of Jesus. Just Jesus. The Bible says that demons tremble at the sound of that name. Right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Right now, we bind every foul spirit, every spirit of manipulation, every emotional manipulation, every soulish manipulation that has attacked, that has come, that by demonic assignment against your life in the name of Jesus, that when you seem to be completely at peace, all of a sudden from, from nowhere, you get a hit. Eh, shaman de rebesi. Bind right now. I bind every lie, every mind game in the name of Jesus. Huh. Whoo, my goodness. My goodness, right now. There it is. 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 God says, You belong to me, daughter. You are mine. You are you are mine. You are my precious, precious inheritance, declares the Lord. My goodness. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just Lord, we come in total surrender right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you that this vessel is clean, made whole. God, God, make whole every missing piece. Ah, every missing piece in Jesus' name. Woo! My goodness, there's a fire right now. There's a fire right now. In the name of Jesus, make her completely whole. She's not walking around with any missing parts. She's not walking around with any missing emotions. She's not walking around desensitized or, un or not being able to feel in certain areas of her life. But God, everything is restored. Everything right now, whole again. What the years... 
have buried, what the years have taken from you, what those years. Now, 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 now. Whew, my goodness, there's an anointing right now. Daughter, you're being made whole right now in Jesus' name. There it is. 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 Right now, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, whole, be made whole, be made whole, 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 whole. I want you to say that whole again, whole again. Come on, just say it, say it whole again. I'm whole again. I am whole. I am receiving that right now. That I am, been, I've been made whole again. Whole, whole. Woo! My goodness. There's an anointing, daughter, that's falling all over you right now. Shh. It's working. It's working things. It's working things out. It's making you whole again. It's making you completely whole. Whole. Not lacking anything. No part missing. No part missing. No part. I hear the Spirit of God saying this to somebody. I hear God saying that nobody, that you've been looking for somebody, you've been looking for somebody to make you whole. And God says that you're looking in the wrong place because the only one that can make you completely whole is Him. Is Him. So you've been worshiping at the wrong altar. You've been worshiping the wrong God. You've been worshiping, you've been worshiping a man, you've been worshiping a woman that you feel you need in your life. And God says, worship at my altar, worship at my feet. I make you whole, I make you complete, not lacking any parts whatsoever. Jimmy, God says, He's putting every part back every time someone walked out on you and took a part of you God says I'm putting that back I'm putting that back Woo, my God there's an anointing right now Shh. there is an anointing flowing it's like a faucet over you Jimmy it's like a faucet right now from the top of your head feel that from the top of your head flowing down your shoulders your arms down through your legs right now it's a wholeness God is restoring wholeness back into you Shh. I thank you so much for your patience faith world I don't remember the last time we left at this time, but I thank you. I thank you for being patient with your brothers and sisters. Somebody say amen. How many of you know we give everything else six days of the week? Am I right? We give six days of the week to everything else. Job, family, children, business. One day we come to God's house and we want to leave on time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're doing. I hear the Spirit of God saying, Jimmy, that he's removing all of the cords, all of the cords that the enemy attached to you. And every time you're taking two steps forward, the cord tries to pull you back. God says, I'm breaking those cords of control. I'm breaking those cords of control in your soul, in your emotions. Oh my goodness, there's an anointing right now, son. An anointing. Woo, my goodness. In your presence, oh Lord, we worship you, almighty God. In your presence, oh Lord, you 
make me whole again. You make me whole again. There's nothing that's missing. You make me complete. You make me whole again. Oh, Lord. You make me whole again. You put me back together you make me complete holy one God is so good in a masabra shori and come on intercede right now can you can you guys intercede for this couple just extend your hands over here come on come on have you ever been in a desperate place where you need God to show up and he's the only one that can? That's where they're at right now. Nothing else is going to do. Shh. Nothing else. It has to be God. It has to be God. Man, I feel the anointing right now. Right now we break everything. Every every manipulation, every mind game, every emotional mind game, emotional game, Shh. every hurt, every wound, Shh. every trauma associated. Shh. Man, there's an anointing right now. Whole again. You're whole again, yeah. You are whole again. Be made whole right now. Whole again. Lacking nothing. No good thing. No good thing. Have I withheld from you? Shh. My goodness. Shh. Man, I just, woo, there's an anointing on you right now. God is working. He's doing it. He's doing it. He's doing it. I just felt in my heart right now that God wants to heal some men here right now that were sexually abused when you were a child and you've been walking around with that shame and you've been walking around with that shame on you God wants you to know it was not your fault it wasn't your fault you were a child yeah, but I allowed it, but it wasn't your fault. It was someone else that took advantage of your innocence. And God says, I'm restoring to you what the enemy took right now. I speak to shame. And I command shame to let go and release right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Right now, right now, right now. When, when this thing starts leaving you, some of you are just going to feel like you're going to scream. Like you're just going to scream. But that's all right. Don't hold back. Don't worry. Come on, you're in a safe place right now. Shame, I speak to you. Childhood trauma, I speak to you. And I command, you can't hide in this place. You cannot hide in this house. You can't hide here. I command you now, up, out of him, out of him, now, in Jesus' name. Shh. Shh. 
right now. Right now, it's been, it's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. In the name of Jesus, it's done. Shina masombro on the roche te rebesias. This is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And I know sometimes we come to church and we just want to leave right away, right? Because we're hungry. I'm hungry. But I got to tell you, I'm more hungry for God and a move of God than I am anything else. Can somebody say amen to that? I love you guys. You're, you're awesome, man. You're awesome. I love you. Thank you. I love you. Love you guys so much. I laugh because sometimes you're like in here, amen, pastor. And when you get in your car and you're like, man, pastor, it was long today. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> How many love to just bask in God's presence? Amen. You guys are amazing. Well, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. God spoke to me. God spoke to me this week. And you know what the Lord said? Get ready because our services are going to be characterized for demons coming out. They can't hide in this house anymore. I said they cannot hide in this house anymore, 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 anymore. Is there an amen? People be Come on, come on, come on, come on, in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody praise him, praise him. Give him leper worship, come on. Somebody give him leper worship, leper worship. Hey! The Lord said, get ready, because people will be healed in our meetings. It's going to be normal, normal. Not once in a blue moon, but normal. Is there an amen in the name of Jesus? Is that all right? How many want, how many know when God shows up, it gets messy? For us, it gets messy. But for God, it's perfectly normal. Amen? Oh, my goodness. Hey, Jocelyn, where are you at? Come, daughter. You're an amazing. Is your mom and dad here? That's your mom and dad? No, right? They're not here? Oh, they, they look like. Oh, no, that's right. Your mom's went with the Lord, right. Um, but your dad, is he here? No, he's not. Okay. Yeah, he looks like, he looks like, there's somebody here that looks just like your dad. We're going to pray for you. Jocelyn, Jocelyn was, uh, she's been born again how long already? A couple months. Just a few months. She's been, huh? Almost three months. And, and we have online, we have a beautiful picture of her coming out of baptism. And she looks like an angel. I mean, God just shows up on her. Beautiful. That picture's anointed. Well, Jocelyn is uh, going for... We're going to pray that God determine the time. But right, for right now, the way it looks, it's 60 days, maybe two months, a couple of months. She's going to Asia. Okay? Where exactly in Asia? Bali, Indonesia. She's going to Bali, Indonesia, all right? And it's work-related, right? Or it's work-related. And um, we need to pray for her. Why? Because she's a three-month-old baby in the Lord. Now, she's on fire, and she loves God. But we have to stay connected. You hear me, Jocelyn? This is, this is your mom in the Lord. <laughs> In fact, in fact, Jocelyn has told my wife that, and she showed my wife a picture of her mother who passed away. And my wife looks a lot like her mom. And so the Lord restored a mother into her life. Come on, somebody. Now, she has a stepmom as well, but somebody say amen. So... Please extend your hands over here as we pray for Jocelyn as she goes. Please make sure you pick us up online. I know you're going to be in another part of the world. But get the word of the Lord.
call us if you have to, whatever. Father, we, we lay hands on, on your little girl. We thank you for her. We thank you for what you're doing in her life. We thank you that her light is shining brightly. We thank you for the joy of the Lord that's her strength. We thank you, God, that you're bringing her through even, even the difficult times, even the times she doesn't understand full well, but you're walking her through. You're strengthening her. You're putting people in her life that will be pillars, that will be a garrison around her. You're putting angels to go with her to Indonesia. Lord, that they would keep her soul, that they would keep her as she goes forth. Father, I pray that you would guard her mind, and guard her emotions, guard her life, protect her from all of harm's way. Lord, let her be, let the, let her be invisible to the enemy. Let her be invisible. Put a shield of protection around her that the enemy not even see her. Lord, like when, like when they were trying to kill Jesus and throw him off the cliff, and the Bible says that he just passed in the midst of them and they didn't even see him. God, I pray that you would give her that invisibility to the enemy, oh God. In the name of Jesus, cover her, protect her, give her the wisdom that she so desperately needs in this stage in her life. And Father, and I pray, dear God, that you would Help her to learn whatever she needs to learn and to learn it as quickly as she needs to learn it. And once she's gotten whatever she's going to go over there to get, that you would give her the green light and let her know when she needs to come back. In the name of Yeshua, we break every trap of the enemy. We destroy every net of the enemy. Anything laid in her path to entangle her, we cast it out, we bind it in Jesus' name, and we pray that she goes forth with the fear of the Lord, because it's the fear of God that preserves our life. In the name of Jesus, somebody shout amen. 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 Come on. Hallelujah. All right. Man, you guys are, you guys hung with me today, I'll tell you. I don't stay this long. You know that. I'm, at this time, I'm usually on my way home. But thank you so much for hanging with the Holy Ghost today. Amen? I love you, faith world. I love you with all my heart. This Wednesday, we're here just for an hour, right? We have an amazing teaching uh, from John Bevere, and it's, it's on video, but we come and gather and discuss it here. Come out. Young people here, the youth that are here, come out this Wednesday. We're next door on Wednesday nights with teenagers or young adults. Would love to see you guys. We don't come to play, by the way. We come for Holy Ghost encounters. Amen. This past, this past Wednesday, there was deliverance. What was happening here was happening there first. Somebody say amen. It was happening there first. So young people, don't stay home. Parents, bring your kids, man. Bring them. They're in good hands. Amen. I love you, faith world. God bless you. When you go out with your family and eat, remember me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Be blessed. God bless you guys. Love you much.